As a two-year-old boy, Alex Hanscom witnessed something no child should ever see. He was out walking with his mum, Rachel Nickell, on Wimbledon Common when she was murdered in front of him by a stranger. That was 25 years ago this week and Alex has spent much of his life since abroad. But today, to coincide with that anniversary, he's come back to London. I'll be talking to him in a moment. But first, here's a reminder of why it became one of the most notorious cases in recent memory. It was one of the most high-profile murder cases of recent decades. 23-year-old Rachel Nickell was walking through Wimbledon Common in southwest London in 1992 when she was sexually assaulted and then stabbed to death. It happened in the park in broad daylight and in front of her two-year-old son, Alex. Police combed through every part of the crime scene looking for vital evidence and despite not being able to forensically link him to Rachel, they identified local man Colin Stagg as a suspect. After trying to get a confession out of him by using an undercover police officer, the case was thrown out of court and he was formally cleared. It wasn't until more than a decade later that officers finally identified Rachel's killer and Robert Knapper pleaded guilty to manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. Given the intense media interest in the case and the fact that Alex was the only witness to the murder, his dad Andre decided to take him to rural France to start a new life. When they were later tracked down by the press, they moved to Spain. Now, a quarter of a century later, Alex is a young man ready to tell his story. And Alex is with me now. Alex, thank you so much for coming in. Thank Let's go sir. back 25 years and people will be surprised to hear that you were only two, but you still have such vivid memories of what happened. Yes. Well, I was three weeks away from my third birthday and uh, you know, I believe that when you go through difficult experiences like this, either you, you know, you forget completely about the experience so that you can continue to function, or you remember that experience more vividly than any other of the ones that occurred around that time. But for me, I, I have that, those memories of that, that loving environment of home, which uh, have stayed with me to balance things out. Mm. Are they more just sort of amorphous memories? I mean, your feelings about the happier times rather than specific memories? Yeah, I think with memory, of course, you remember details, but more than anything, it's the feeling that's associated with that memory. So for me, that environment I had at home with both my parents, you know, the way I describe it best is just the feeling of love, you know, of, of being loved and of loving in return. And I know you're able to describe exactly what you saw that day. We don't have to go through it all here, but seeing your own mother killed, it was then very, very difficult for you to come to terms with it for a long, long time. And your dad, Andre, took you abroad to try and help with that. Yes. I mean, it was, you know, growing up in the UK um, with the, the intense scrutiny that we were under from the detectives, the, the grueling sessions with the child psychologist mm -hmm. in which we were reliving that day over and over again. And, um, you know, also the extent in which the media had become involved in every aspect of our lives. So when my life was put in danger, when a full colour picture was um, published by a major publication, that was when my father decided, you know, that we had to move on mm. and build a new life together somewhere where no one knew who we were. So you were in rural France first and then moved to Spain as well. Uh, and yes. even after all this time, this is a story a lot of people, I was only 16 at the time and I can remember it very well as well. So. How have you been able to come to terms with it? I know in your, your book's called Letting Go. Have you been yes. able to let go? I think, you know, um, in the circumstances that we were on, being on the run, as you say, the press tracked us down in France once again. We were forced to keep our identity a secret for many years. And as well, me growing up, not wanting to be defined by that experience, I kept those um, circumstances a secret. But mm. now I've reached the point in my life where I've realized that embracing that, all those aspects, you know, that's who I am, and me sharing my story um, as a way of inspiring others in their journey through life. Yeah, how did you come to that realization? Because I think it's, it's something that a lot of people would, wouldn't be surprised to hear if you never wanted to talk about it in public. I think, uh, you know, I believe that you can't always help the people that have helped you directly. But when you reach a higher level of understanding in your life, you know, I believe you have an obligation to give back to those that are within your control to, to help and, and have a positive influence on. So, you know, I did experience lots of difficulties growing up, 
but at the same time I've received lots of blessings and, and you know a great amount of help and support from from people over the years so I wanted to give back um, as a way to inspire them in their journey through life.